WFCA's Faith in Sports. I'm Chris Schneider. Welcome to the DFW Fellowship of Christian Athletes weekly radio show, Faith in Sports. Now, the DFWFCA Business Community Luncheon is coming right up. It's Thursday, May 12th at the Fort Worth Club, and it will feature some of the greatest college football coaches present and past in the nation. Baylor great Grant Taft will hold court with Alabama great Gene Stallings and current TCU head coaching great Gary Patterson. Now, in preparation for that wonderful event, we will talk with Baylor coaching legend Grant Taft, who, among other things, will tell us today about a harrowing experience on a team flight. It's pitch dark in the plane because the electric uh, system had been damaged uh, in that uh, second aborted landing. So all of a sudden I hear a voice call out and it was one of my players and I still don't know to this day which one it was and they said, Coach, uh, we're really scared. Could you pray for us? So I stood in the back of the plane and uh, played prayed an extremely fervent prayer because we we were in a situation that none of us knew what the outcome could be. More from coaching great Grant Taff in just a few minutes. Our DFWFCA 50th anniversary classic moment this week comes from one of Tom Landry's boys, legendary cowboy linebacker Bob Brunig, who will tell us the story about his first team meeting with the Cowboys. They used to, to take a lot of free agents plus the draft picks, and so there's about 100 guys in the room all stuffed in one big room and coach landry walks in and he says hey welcome gentlemen nice to see you and and uh, welcome to the dallas cowboys and he says a uh, first thing i'd like to tell you here's my priorities in life the first one is my faith and the second one is my family and the third priority is my football or my work he said you might want to consider that as well my faith is a faith in christ more from cowboy great bob brunig coming right up in the classic moment later this half hour also joining us on the show today is dfwfca north dallas area representative michael santiago as we get that layer of coaches who are dedicated to studying god's word uh to walking with jesus walking with their spouses raising their own kids uh, to have a healthy understanding of who Jesus Christ is uh, and how God's allowing them as coaching families to use the platform of athletics to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. More from DFWFCA North Dallas area rep Michael Santiago coming up in just a few minutes. We would love to connect with you. You can find us on Facebook at DFWFCA and you can find us on Twitter at FCA DFW. Now our special guest today is a college football coaching legend, especially in the state of Texas. Grant Taff is an honored member of the College Football Hall of Fame. Now, Baylor had been 7-43-1 in the five years before Taff arrived at Baylor. Within three years, he would lead the Bears to their first Southwest Conference title in half a century. Coach Taff, thank you so much for joining us today. You know, it's just a really a pleasure to be with you because you're talking Today, and we're going to discuss uh, one of uh, my favorite entities in America, and that's Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and one's uh, relationship to Christ uh, certainly is a part of that for me. So, Coach Taft, when did you first get involved with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes? Well, you know, I have been involved. I was thinking about it this morning because I figured that'd be your first question. And uh, <laughs> so I was thinking about the timeline. In 1960, uh, I was uh, the head track coach at McMurray College. I'd become that at age 23. Three years later, I get the head football job to go along with the head track coach. And I'm uh, 25, fixing to turn 26. And uh, I had come to the conclusion uh, pretty early on in my own personal life that we are all physical, mental, and spiritual. And uh, I always described it like sitting on a three-legged stool. If we do not develop all three of those uh, components of our lives, then we uh, could easily topple over. It's hard for uh, a stool to stand balanced on two legs. So I always use that theory. And so I wanted to, as a coach, because I felt God had led me to coaching, I felt very strongly that I needed uh, in uh, a way, whatever way I could, teach the importance of uh, spiritual development 
as well as physical and mental development on our players. So I started uh, as the head coach there, and I don't, I don't know if you uh, ever heard the story of the plane crash, which is another very interesting part of this, but uh, I started uh, what I found out later was a huddle. Uh, that is, I started meeting separately with our players uh, in an informal fashion and uh, doing Bible study with them. So then I heard about an organization up in Dallas, as a matter of fact, that was doing a similar thing. So I made contact and found out it was what was called a fellowship of Christian athletes. From that day forward, I have been totally immersed in FCA. I served on the national board for 20 years. I uh, was chairman twice. Uh, Tom Landry and I, over a 20-year span of time, did about 90 percent of the fundraising nationally for the FCA. Everywhere I've been, I've had FCA as a part of our uh, program, and uh, I still to this day uh, speak all over the country and raise money for FCA because in our society today, never ever in the history of our nation has FCA been more needed. And that is the foundation of what uh, our nation needs, is we need to turn back uh, to Christ. We need to turn to the values and the principles of Judeo-Christian religions and to recover this nation through work ethic and a value system that develops character. And so FCA is a part of that for the young people across America. We are talking with Baylor football coaching legend Grant Taft. More with Coach Taft coming right up. And later in the show, we'll get our 50th anniversary classic moment from Dallas Cowboy linebacking legend Bob Brunig, one of Tom Landry's boys. Heads up to all coaches. FCA has something special coming up just for you. The Coaches Enrichment Camp. It'll be held July 7th through the 10th at a wonderful lake resort and spa. It is open to all Texas coaches, married or single, and it's always an incredibly great time. Get all the information at dfwfca.org, and we hope to see you there. This is the DFW Fellowship of Christian Athletes weekly radio show, Faith in Sports, brought to you by the DFWFCA Business Community Luncheon at the Fort Worth Club May 12th, featuring Grant Taft, Gary Patterson, and Gene Stallings. Did you know that after a trip to an FCA sports camp in Estes Park, Colorado in 1962, Dallas Cowboys coach Tom Landry felt inspired to use his position as a coach to influence young student athletes. So in 1966, 50 years ago, Coach Landry helped launch the Fellowship of Christian Athletes in Dallas. Hi, I'm Rick Bowles, North Texas Director for the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and I'd like to ask you to tell us your FCA story. What impact did FCA have or is currently having on your life? Visit dfwfca.org for more information. I tell students if they can sweat, they can be a part of FCA and everybody can sweat, so all are welcome. FCA has taught me how to lead. It's taught me how to be a leader. It's taught me how to present myself and how to live a life full of character both on and off the field. I can't think of any other scenario where you can see people from such diverse backgrounds able to connect in a way that we can connect at FCA. being around other kids who also love God the same because you get to see, wow, they love God too. And they've been through what I've been through, so wow, I can relate to that. FCA teaches you to put Christ and others before yourself. Just to know that, yeah, you can be an athlete and that can be what you do, but it's not your identity. As you can see, it just greatly impacted me personally and spiritually and um, will always be part of my story. Chris Schneider, welcome back to DFWFCA's Faith in Sports, sponsored by the DFWFCA Business Community Luncheon, May 12th at the Fort Worth Club, featuring live and in-person Grant Taft, Gary Patterson, and Gene Stallings. And we'll continue our conversation with Baylor coaching legend Grant Taft in just a moment. Also coming up shortly, our DFWFCA 50th anniversary classic moment with Dallas Cowboys Super Bowl winning linebacker Bob Brunig, who will tell us what Coach Landry faith meant to the rest of the team. In addition to that, you know, we had a weekly Bible study taught by Howard Hendricks, who was from DTS, Dallas Theological Seminary. He was great with the players, and uh, you know, we had some pretty 
pretty healthy gatherings of guys on the team and coaches. And the reality is God was working, and Coach Landry was uh, a great leader in that regard and brought Christ into his work, and it was evident. More from Cowboy great Bob Brunig in just a few minutes. Also coming up, we will hear from DFWFCA North Dallas area representative Michael Santiago. For some people, the love, the grace, and the free gift of salvation – for some people, uh, they cannot seem to wrap their mind around that. Uh, they see it as simply a fairy tale story uh, that there's no way a God created the universe would love them that much. Uh, and so there is that denial uh, that I do get from people I have interaction with within the context of our people group, athletics. More from DFWFCA area representative Michael Santiago in just a few minutes. The DFWFCA Sports Leadership Camp at DBU will be June 28th through July 1st. This is for high school students. You can go to dfwfca.org to get all the information. It is time to continue our conversation with Baylor coaching great Grant Taft. Coach, thank you so much for sticking around with us. A few minutes ago, you alluded to a story about a harrowing experience that you had on a team flight. Tell us about that. What happened? Well, uh, it uh, is huge in my life. My first book, uh, I believe, came out of the plane crash because it solidified my faith. Uh, we were playing Monroe, Louisiana. I was the head coach, obviously, uh, and we had flown over, uh, played the game, got on the plane, and uh, started to take off. And the pilots inadvertently had left the elevator locks on the tail uh, flaps of the plane, and uh, pilots tell me they won't fly with those locked, but uh, we did. We got in the air. Uh, to speed the story up, uh, we uh, realized that uh, the pilots did, that uh, we had this issue and problem. So they circled the field, came back, and trying to land, and they were too high. They couldn't feather the plane like they wanted to, and so we dropped about 20 feet, bounced in the air, turned sideways, and they shot the power. It was a DC-3 uh, old military cargo plane that they had uh, converted. So it had powerful engines, thank God, because uh, those engines pulled us out of that uh, first opportunity to die. They circled the field again, this time not knowing that the left uh, landing gear had been crumpled in the first averted landing. <laughs> and go back in, touch it down, we're on one wheel, teeter-tottering. We're going to go wingtip over wingtip, and they shoot the power to it, pull in the air, and we're up in the air again. And now you got to understand that we are—we know nothing in the back. Uh, we're we're sitting there uh, trying to figure out what's going on. So we get some altitude. The door opens, and the captain uh, sent his co-pilot back to tell me they had a problem. He didn't have to tell me that. I already <laughs> knew we had a problem. I just didn't know what it was. <laughs> so anyway, uh, to make a long story short, we flew over to Shreveport, Louisiana, for a crash landing. They prepared us and said they'd have to crash land at Strategic Air Command Base, so they figured that they'd foam it down for us. We were pulling the right wheel up and do a belly landing, and it's pitch dark in the plane because the electric uh, system had been damaged uh, in that uh, second aborted landing. So all of a sudden I hear a voice call out, and it was one of my players, and I still don't know to this day which one it was, and they said, Coach, uh, we're really scared. Could you pray for us? So I stood in the back of the plane and uh, played, prayed an extremely fervent prayer because we, we were in a situation that none of us knew what the outcome could be. It was really interesting in my prayer because what I, what I virtually said was that, God, you have a plan, you have a purpose, and you have a will for each of our lives. And I just pray, Father, that we might fulfill that by this night uh, allowing us to live through it. So we did have the belly landing, the plane caught on fire. They didn't phone the runway down. Uh, we got everybody out of the plane as it burned, and uh, we looked around, and uh, there was not one injury to any player or any coach. And so when we got back, uh, I called the team together and uh, formed what was really interesting. Uh, I decided to make something impressive but yet fun out of that experience, so I had some cards printed up in the school colors. 
and I wanted to call, I put a scripture on it and called it the, we were the McMurray Indians, and so I called it the Brotherhood of the Indian Belly Landing Experts, <laughs> and uh, put a scripture on it, and but that morning before I was to meet with the team, the, the printer called and said, Coach, uh, that's really too much verbiage on here, can I just uh, abbreviate by just putting the first initial on that, and I said, well, sure, and so I didn't even look at them, got back and handed the cards out after I told the players and gave them a little time talk about really what uh, seeking God's plan meant in our life, that it's pretty obvious he had a plan for us. And one of the guys said, Coach, uh, we're, we've just formed the Bible Club. And it was the B-I-B-L-E <laughs> club that he had abbreviated. <laughs> so we've all been card-carrying members all of these years. We've had a couple of reunions, and uh, it's been amazing what God's done with the lives of those young men and coaches who were spared that night. That is College Football Hall of Famer, Baylor coaching legend Grant Taft, who will headline the upcoming DFWFCA Business Community Luncheon May 12th at the Fort Worth Club, along with Gene Stallings and TCU's Gary Patterson. Coming up next, we will hear from DFWFCA area representative Michael Santiago. We'll also get our 50th anniversary classic moment from Dallas Cowboys Super Bowl great Bob Brunick. DFWFCA is celebrating 50 years of ministry, and we're asking you to help commemorate this milestone by sharing your FCA story with us. You'll receive a special FCA scripture coin and be entered into a monthly drawing to receive DFWFCA 50th anniversary gear. Go to our website, dfwfca.org, and get all the information. This is the DFW Fellowship of Christian Athletes weekly radio show, Faith in Sports. Situated on 330 acres of beautiful natural landscape with facilities to accommodate groups up to 1,000, Lakeview Camp and Retreat Center is the ideal place to schedule your next event. Whatever your group's goals are, Lakeview aims to meet your needs, providing year-round service facilities for retreats, conferences, camps, corporate meetings, outdoor education outings, school events, and family gatherings. Our friendly staff is committed to making your stay a great experience. Come to Lakeview Camp and Retreat Center and enjoy state-of-the-art facilities, activities that engage and rejuvenate, comfortable lodging, and great food in a setting that inspires the awe of the greatness of God. To learn more about this scenic location for your next event, visit us online today. For more information, visit lakeviewcamp.net. The DFW Fellowship of Christian Athletes Business Community Luncheon is May 12th at the Fort Worth Club. Baylor Hall of Fame coach Grant Taft will be holding court with Alabama legend Gene Stallings and TCU's Gary Patterson. I'll uh, interview those two great coaches. I'm sure there will be no yarns told that day. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. It'll be legendary. The DFWFCA Business Community Luncheon, May 12th, with Stallings, Patterson, and Taft. Go to dfwfca.org for all the info. Look forward to seeing you. At FCA, we're touching millions one heart at a time. Since 1954, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes has been putting the heart and soul in sports by challenging athletes and coaches to impact the world for Jesus Christ. As the largest sports ministry in the world, FCA now reaches over 2 million people annually on the professional, college, high school, junior high, and youth levels. Through this shared passion for athletics and faith, lives are changed one heart at a time. Learn more at fca.org. Chris Schneider, welcome back to DFWFCA's Faith in Sports, brought to you by the DFWFCA Business Community Luncheon, May 12th at the Fort Worth Club, and featuring TCU head coach Gary Patterson, along with coaching legends Grant Taff and Gene Stallings. We'll have our DFWFCA 50th Anniversary Classic moment coming right up with Dallas Cowboy linebacking great Bob Brunig. He will tell us what it was like to play for Coach Landry. If you like some baseball, be sure to join us for FCA Night at the Ballpark. It's Saturday night, May 21st at Dr. Pepper Stadium. All-you-can-eat tickets are just $25. You can get all the details on this great night at the ballpark at dfwfca.org. Joining us here on Faith in Sports now is the DFWFCA area representative for North Dallas, Michael Santiago. Michael, thank you for being here. Tell us what's going on in your area of FCA ministry. A big part 
lot of the buzz is what we're looking at as far as it relates to the local area. You know, the spring campaign is always the big emphasis, not only to drive kids towards camp, uh, but to finish their school year strong. And then right on top of that, Chris, is we got that layer of coaches who are dedicated to studying God's Word, uh, to walking with Jesus, walking with their spouses, raising their own kids uh, to have a healthy understanding of who Jesus Christ is uh, and how God's allowing them as coaching families to use the platform of athletics to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. So how did you get involved in FCA? What what was the, you know, how did Jesus do that to get you in this ministry? A current administrator for Richardson ISD, Harry Everett, uh, was the head football coach at Richardson High School. And I happened to have some student athletes as an area youth pastor involved in athletics there. He allowed me to come serve as the team chaplain. And after a year, then he introduced me uh, to FCA, which I was completely uh, blown away by how God could use the platform of walking with Jesus and and the uh, venue of athletics uh, to share the love of Jesus with other people. Uh, so as a local youth pastor, a head football coach saw something in me that uh, he studied and he made sure that there was faithfulness there. And then he engaged me with the local FCA huddle at Richardson High School. And the rest, Chris, as they say, is the rest of the story. What is the best part of the job for you? I so uh, enjoy seeing a coach move from being a fan of Jesus to a follower of Jesus. That is huge for me. How do you help him or her do that? Yeah, absolutely. So one, being aware, we got to recognize, uh, hey, I mean, I'm a sinner and there's a penalty for sin. And I need to know that Jesus Christ, only Jesus Christ paid for that penalty. Salvation's not by works, right? A person must receive Christ, uh, and then they need to know that they have the assurance of salvation. When a coach can connect those dots, uh, he or she has a much better propensity to uh, not only lead themselves well under uh, the authority of God's Word and within the confines of a healthy local church, uh, they're going to be a better spouse. Their marriage is going to be healthier. Their kids are going to have a greater concept of God's love and God's measure of um, provision as well as well, playing uh, running inside our lane right as God in, intended for us to do uh, on this journey of being disciple for him but what is the hardest part of your job we we found out earlier the the best part of your job what's the most difficult part of being uh, an FCA area director I would say uh, having to accept the fact that for some people the love the grace and the free gift of salvation for some people uh, they cannot seem to wrap their mind around that uh, they see it as simply a fairy tale story uh, that there's no way a God creator of the universe would love them that much uh, and so there is that denial uh, that I do get from people I have interaction with within the context of our people group, athletics, coaches and athletes who simply say, no, you know what, I'm not ready uh, to receive what God has for me. That is the hardest part for me, Chris, more than anything else, any other challenge is watching people walk away um, from eternity. How do folks, they're listening to you and they say, man, I want to help that dude. How do they get in touch with you? How do they find you so that they can help you? We've got multiple uh, venues for that to happen. You can check us out on dfwfca.org under our staff selection piece. You can pull it down to my name, contact me uh, via email. It's the most efficient way because uh, like most people, I am consistently checking email on a regular basis uh, and then by uh, communicating that way. And what is your email? M as in Michael, Santiago at fca.org. That is DFWFCA Area Representative for North Dallas, Michael Santiago. Thank you, sir, for your wonderful ministry. It is time for the DFWFCA 50th Anniversary Classic Moment, provided this week by one of Tom Landry's Cowboys, linebacker, Super Bowl winner, Captain Bob Bruni, who tells us what it was like playing for the great Tom Landry. When they had their first rookie meeting, at the Dallas Cowboys practice field, which is a pretty humble uh, facility there on Forest Lane in Abrams in Dallas. They, they, a hundred of us came in. They used to, to take a lot of free agents plus the draft picks. And so there's about a hundred guys in the room, all stuffed in one big room. And Coach Landry walks in and he says, hey, welcome, gentlemen. Nice to see you and, and uh, welcome to the Dallas Cowboys. And he says, uh, first thing I'd like to tell you, here's my priorities in life. The first one is my faith. And the second one is my family, and the third priority is my football or my work. He said, you might want to consider that as well. My faith is a faith in Christ. And it was pretty brief, but 
essentially he set out an order of priorities. And then later he said, uh, guys, here's, here's a pathway for you. Your first job is to make this team. Now, you're sitting with 100 guys, and a typical NFL team harvest is about five rookies per year. So your chances are like 5%. And so you look around and you go, wow, make the team. That's a big, that's a challenge <laughs> to get that done. And he says, the second thing you should do when you make the team is have a goal of becoming a starter. And so you go, wow, that seems a long way off, but it's a pathway. And he says, and the third thing you should do is consider uh, distinguishing yourself in the NFL. And if you do that, all, all those three things, you're going to help the Dallas Cowboys be a world champion. So there's a pathway. So I thought, man, that's just awesome, you know, to think in those terms. So in addition to that, you know, we had a weekly Bible study taught by Howard Hendricks, was from DTS, Dallas Theological Seminary. He was great with the players, and uh, you know, we had some pretty pretty healthy gatherings of guys on the team and coaches. And the reality is God was working, and Coach Landry was uh, a great leader in that regard and brought Christ into his work, and it was evident. And uh, he had great character and great poise and uh, great fairness, and and, uh, it was just awesome. That is Dallas Cowboys Super Bowl winning great Bob Brunig with this week's DFWFCA 50th Anniversary Classic Moment. Thank you, sir. Attention business owners who are friends of FCA, you can save money and support DFWFCA at the same time. Learn how what your business does every day can help support this amazing ministry. Go to dfwfca.org and get the details. Coming up next, we'll tell you who the special guest is going to be with us here on the show next week. I'll give you a hint. He's a former head coach of the Los Angeles Lakers, former head coach of Shaq and Kobe. We'll also tell you who will provide the DFWFCA 50th Anniversary Classic Moment. This is DFWFCA's Faith in Sports, brought to you by the DFWFCA Business Community Luncheon, May 12th at the Fort Worth Club. It's all about college football with legends Grant Taff and Gene Stallings, joined by current TCU coaching great Gary Patterson. In 1966, Coach Tom Landry had the inspiration to start the Fellowship of Christian Athletes in Dallas. This year, Dallas-Fort Worth FCA is celebrating God's amazing impact on coaches and athletes during our 50th anniversary. Over 16,000 students and athletes are involved with FCA in North Texas. Nearly 500 coaches and teachers volunteer their time to influence student athletes. Visit dfwfca.org for more information, including how you can pick up some one-of-a-kind 50th anniversary products like caps, shirts, coffee mugs, and more. There is a common place for student athletes and coaches to go to strengthen their faith in Christ. At my FCA huddle. There's a place to be encouraged to face the trials and temptations of life. At my FCA huddle. There is a place to receive confidence to share the light of Christ. At my FCA huddle. FCA huddles meet on junior high, high school, and college campuses all across America. To find one near you or to learn how to start one up, call toll-free 866-STV-5031 or go to fca.org. I'm Chris Schneider. Thank you for joining us for DFWFCA's Faith in Sports Radio Show, brought to you by the DFWFCA Business Community Luncheon at the Fort Worth Club May the 12th, featuring some college football greatness, Gene Stallings, Grant Taff, and Gary Patterson. Our thanks to our special guest today, Baylor coaching legend Grant Taff and Cowboy great Bob Brunig. I'm Chris Schneider, the sports and spirit speaker. You can find me at RadioactiveSpeaking.com. Godly messages with stories from the greatest coaches and athletes of all time. Find me, the sports and spirit speaker, at RadioactiveSpeaking.com. NBA playoff season is here, so next week we'll talk with former Laker head coach Del Harris, the man who got the Shaq and Kobe era underway in Los Angeles, also a former Mavericks coach. Our classic moment next week will be provided by none other than Tim Tebow. Guests scheduled to join us in future weeks include Lou Holtz, Tom Osborne, Roger Staubach, Dan Reeves, Danny Werfel, Mike Singletary, Tony Dungy, Andy Pettit, Ben Zobrist, Adrian Gonzalez, and many others. FCA's Faith in Sports is an outreach of DFW Fellowship of Christian Athletes, hosted and produced by me, Chris Schneider. Executive producer is Rick Bowles. For information on DFW FCA, contact Rick at rbowles, B-O-W-L-E-S, at fca.org. And remember this week to do all that you do unto the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you from the DFW Fellowship of Christian Athletes, Faith in Sports. <music>